ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. Welcome into the Wednesday, February 23rd edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We got a fun show for you today. Last week, we spoke with Charleston area attorney Rusty Webb. This was ahead of what happened with Marshall filing its suit in Campbell County Circuit Court. We're going to talk to Rusty today. He's got all the information about what Marshall has done. He's going to break it down for us. So he'll give us his opinion. Here's a hint. If you listened to it last week or you caught the podcast, you heard that Rusty had a sort of an outline of what Marshall could do and should do. I think he nailed it. He did a pretty good job breaking it down last week, what Marshall should do. So he's going to be with us here in a little bit to talk about that. Also, we're going to hear a little bit more from Tony Kemper and CeCe Mays as well. Marshall is going to face off against Middle Tennessee in a rematch from the 80-41 to loss. That was back in January, late January. Uh, not a good performance from CC Mays. Uh, she felt, she thought that that wasn't the game. And uh, just a kind of a preview of what we're going to hear tonight and tomorrow from CC. She talked about that rematch with Middle Tennessee. Um, obviously, last game that we played them uh, wasn't the performance that we wanted at all. I think uh, going into it, you know, we kind of we need to watch the film and take in what we did wrong, but, like, kind of also at the same time, like, put that game out of our head. Like, we can't dwell on the past. We have to learn from it, but we can't dwell on it. We just have to stick to what we know, play within ourselves. And I think when we play at our best and do what we do, martial basketball, no one can beat us. That's C.C. Mays from earlier this afternoon. We're going to hear more from her. It was uh, interesting today when we talked to Coach Kemper and also C.C. about the hiring of Christian Spears as the athletic director. If you were with us on the program a few weeks ago when we talked to Tony Kemper, he mentioned that he was part of the committee that was recommending the names that were forwarded to the Board of Governors Committee. This was one of the names, and he he talks a little bit about the process. The athletic director and the other candidates were on campus doing interviews, and so there were some open mic sessions where players like CC got a chance to actually talk about all of that. So we're going to hear that a little bit later on. So that's what's coming up. We'll hear from Tony Kemper about that, hear CC May's thoughts about it. The one thing that stood out from me, you're going to hear this later, Tony said she'd run through a wall for the guy. That's pretty inspirational. To hear him speak and then go want to run through a wall. So I'm interested to hear him on Friday, and that's coming up, of course, at 10 a.m. Presser, we're going to be there, and we'll have, hopefully, uh, the athletic director himself on the program with us that night. So we're looking forward to Friday, the introductory press conference to introduce him to the community. And as I mentioned yesterday, you know, I talked to a couple of people who have told me they've already talked to him. And, of course, these are people who are uh, important positions, moneyed positions, donor positions, booster positions, kind of getting a feel for what are some of the issues, what are some of the things that need to be addressed. So hitting the ground running, he hasn't even been introduced officially yet in a press conference, and he's already making phone calls. So that's a good move on his part. Uh, One thing is for certain, we got a fun, fun next couple of days here. Marshall back in action, taking on Middle Tennessee, both on the women's side and the men's side. We'll hopefully get a victory for both. Marshall's getting ready for the tournament. We got three games left in the tournament. Middle Tennessee, and then you got the split with Western Kentucky. And so these will be the games I think will determine how much momentum Marshall has, both on the women's side and the men's side, going into the Conference USA tournament. The good news is Marshall's not going to be the bottom seed. Southern Miss is going to occupy that space. Everyone gets in. Everyone gets in. So the good news is Marshall's getting in. The record's not going to keep Marshall back. The bad news is I don't know if Marshall can make a run from the the bottom spot or next to the bottom spot. It's going to be hard. you got to play those teams eventually, but you're not going to get an easy draw here. You're not going to start off with a team that you're closer to. Dan D'Antoni will hear his comments tomorrow. Got the game for you right here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930. Some other news coming up. Tomorrow we're going to hear from Chris Grassy because today Marshall announced the schedule 
the herd's going to compete in the college spring lead. Now, this will take place March 25th. It's going to be at Dayton, then April 2nd versus Ohio State. That's going to be here. And then April 9th versus Louisville. Chris is going to tell us more about that tomorrow. Marshall also going to play not in the college spring league. Rio Grande, that's going to be twice on March 5th. So a double header, a double header of action. That's going to be fun. And then next week, we're going to get Ari Agnes back on. I talked to her today. She's going to come on next week because Marshall Volleyball is going to be hosting EKU and Fairmont State at the Cam Anderson Center on April 2nd for spring exhibition. Uh, going to play March 10th at West Virginia State. Going to play in the Kiva Spring College Tournament on April 9th. That's going to be in Louisville. Also going to play April 16th at Ohio. So Coach is going to come back on with us, talk to us about that. It seems like we're seeing more and more of these spring schedules come out. I don't know if uh, this is well, just we didn't really touch on it too much. It just feels like it's a little bit more prominent now. Marshall's actually doing some more spring sports, doing a few more things, and hopefully that will mean different opportunities for basketball as well. Football, you can't go play a team in spring. You just can't do it. You can't. It's a rule. You just can't do it. You can you can scrimmage. You can play the spring game, but you just can't go out and you can't go out and schedule Ohio State. Just say, hey, let's do an exhibition game. You just can't do it. So that's what we've got coming up uh, rest of the week. But when we come back, we're going to speak to our on staff. I guess he's part of the staff now. We're not paying him, so he's he's he, he's Rusty Webb, Charleston area attorney. He definitely. Knew what he was talking about last week when he broke it down, outlined what was happening and what should happen. He's going to break it down some more. I mean, maybe, maybe we're going to sit here and hopefully get a like a, we'll do court TV. We'll get a, a video feed of the proceedings here. We'll just commentate on it. I don't know if we can do that. He's a busy man, but he's going to join us when we continue. Later on, we're going to hear from Tony Kemper, a little bit more from CC Mays. And we'll get your phone calls and text in the text line 304-523-2275. And the phone line always brought to you by White Claw Hard Seltzer. It is made pure at 877-420-TALK. More coming up, including Rusty Webb, Charleston Area Attorney, when we continue with this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. Last week, we invited to the program Charleston Area Attorney Rusty Webb. We wanted to get a legal opinion on what could be happening with Marshall University Conference USA. The league, of course, indicating that it would take action to compel Marshall to honor its agreement, stay in Conference USA its final year. Marshall University indicating that it was planning on leaving Conference USA, terminating its membership and moving on. And inform the league, according to Marshall, that it will be doing so after this academic year. Please do not include us on any other schedules. We're leaving. Sort of the uh, layman's take on it. Uh, Rusty has agreed to join us again on the program I appreciate that because I know these are billable hours, Rusty, so I appreciate that. You're coming on the show. Um, hey, let's just say this. You nailed it last week. You know what you're talking yeah, about, obviously, but, I mean, you were you were on top of pretty much everything. It's almost as if you said it and then someone was listening. I don't know. Maybe that was the case. Well, you can't see me, but I'm dropping the mic right now. Okay. I just dropped it. Fair. Dropped the mic. Very Fair. So, what's your uh, what's your early impression of uh, what's happened since we last spoke? Well, I'm I'm glad they took uh, that action. I'm not going to take credit for it. I I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but um, they Marshall did what I what I think is the best possible strategy for them. I had kind of hoped that they might have coordinated with uh, Southern Miss and uh, ODU, and they may be just waiting to see what happens you know, in the preliminary injunction stage and, you know, they may, they may follow suit literally and figuratively. Uh, but yeah, I think it was the right, the right thing to do. And, and it, it was, I'm glad they didn't, what they did in order to stay out of federal court, Marshall didn't mention a monetary number because if you mention a monetary number above 75,000 and you have two entities in two different States, then you have to go to federal court. So 
they were smart not to mention any kind of exit fees or numbers or payments uh, like that. So they want they want pure declaratory judgment, which is declare that. And I, this is just secondhand knowledge. I haven't I've seen the complaint. Matter of fact, Ryan sent it to me, but I didn't have time to read 63 pages. But one of the issues is um, is the arbitration clause, and Marshall is basically saying we signed this. We signed the conceptual bylaws, and when we signed them, it had no arbitration clause in it. And we discussed this last last Wednesday, Paul. And so, Conference USA says you can't you can't the, the arbitration clause says you can't go to court. You're waiving your right to go to court. And Marshall is essentially saying we want the judge to declare that we can go to court because we were not a party to a subsequent amendment to the bylaws that requires arbitration. So I thought that was interesting. And again, we talked about arbitration last week. So if Marshall gets the outcome at once, what does that mean? What does that translate into for real world action? Well, uh, if Marshall gets what it wants, it'll, it'll win the preliminary injunction, which basically will tell Conference USA to stop to time if they were having a timeout to stop scheduling Marshall's athletic teams uh, beyond football or you know I don't know if they've gone into any additional schedules but just stop scheduling Marshall's teams that's gonna that's gonna make the Sun Belt happy why and it, you know stop the clock while we have a much larger hearing an evidentiary hearing on these issues that Marshall has raised so. Again, like I said last week, I don't, you know, Mar- everyone has to make a decision before the July one. I mean, it. I mean, that's your drop dead date on everything. So, I expect that this judge will will make this a priority, so that Conference USA and the Sun Belt and Marshall and ODU and Southern Miss, you know, if, if they get ancillary impact from this. Can can schedule or re- or reschedule? Okay, if he rules against Marshall, Marshall's got a. Of course, he will have an appeal process as well. So that's it's another issue. But uh, stop everything right now. Uh, determine whether Marshall has to go to arbitration. That's going to be the first issue the judge has to take up. If the judge rules that Marshall has to go to arbitration with Conference USA, then Marshall has to go to com- to arbitration with. Conference USA, or Marshall could theoretically appeal that uh, to the West Virginia Supreme Court. Um, if Marshall doesn't have to arbitrate, then the judge will hear the rest of the issues that Marshall has raised about whether it is whether it has substantially complied with the notice provisions of the bylaws, and if so, can it leave? And if so, does it would it have to pay? I, I would think Marshall would have to pay a little bit extra money above the exit fee because there it isn't we, we we can all agree on this it hasn't been 14 months even if you include October of last year when Marshall stated uh, say October 1 of last year when Marshall stated its intention to leave conference USA even if you went by that they, it's that's not 14 months or since I've taken a breath what if they added the 14 months after Marshall signed? That's another that's another factual dispute. I, 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 the gist of what I understand the complaint says, and again, I haven't read it, is that a lot of these provisions were added on in sort of a, a sort of a we preserve we Conference USA preserve the right to add additional uh, amendments to these bylaws as we deem necessary. Well. That's fine unless it materially affects uh, uh, the teams that are members. And, and, and adding, adding uh, an arbitration clause is a huge deviation from you know, some norm because it takes away your right to, to, to go to court. That's huge. And if they added a 14-month uh, – if, if, if Conference USA – amended its bylaws after Marshall signed and then Marshall say didn't sign the amendment, then that's a big deal because Marshall's not these so-called amendments to the bylaws and, 
and I'd say they have pretty good footing. I was that someone telling someone today. I said, well, to, they said, well, what's the big deal? Well, what if they, you know, a week later, using their bylaws, they said, well, everybody has to ante up another million dollars. Well, that's a big deal. You just can't change your bylaws and say, well, all the teams have to ante up another million dollars. So, just like something that radical, uh, changing uh, a notice period to leave the conference and adding an arbitration clause are huge that I would think under normal procedure would have to be voted on by each of the institution uh, teams, or each of the institutional you know teams. So that's the gist of what I understand Marshall's done and I'm, and I'm, you know I'm really I'm really looking forward to hearing what happens. Something else that interested me, UAB situation was cited as a point of, the conference is not necessarily following its own rules from time to time. How important right. is that? Well, it, it what it does is it, it 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 sets a precedence against CUSA. So if CUSA gave UAB some slack and didn't follow the bylaws, then that means the bylaws don't have to be enforced strictly. And it's and that's that's a that's a, that was that's good pleading on. Marshall's Park to find any deviation from the bylaws that CUSA has allowed or turned their head or, or you know, of course, CUSA is going to come back and say, come on, man, that was a special circumstance. I mean, they, they didn't have football for a year, you know. I mean, you know, that that's what they'll come back and say. They'll say that's not a precedent. That was, you know, that was dropped in our lap, and in order to keep UAB as a as a team or bring them back, we had to, we had to kind of do some uh, out of the out of the wall thinking, I mean that's what they'll say right back. But it was good to Marshall to mention to mention that because that's that that tells the judge that you know you violated your own bylaws before, so wh- you know why why enforce them strictly against Marshall now if all these things are legitimate these amendments. Joining us on the program, Charleston area attorney Rusty Webb, huge herd fan, and of course he has uh, helped us understand the legal process uh, if uh, you were with us last week pretty much laid out the playbook or at least what his playbook would be uh, do you see any place so far just looking at this where Marshall might need to strengthen its case a little bit or you know just from your early cursory look at what you know it seems like it's a pretty pretty solid piece of ground the herd stands on well I again I I'm hearing I didn't read it. Okay, I didn't read the complaint. So this is from a position of having read the news articles that are covering it. But if the 14-month uh, notice provision was in the bylaws when Marshall signed on, which is a, which, as you know, and everybody listening knows, is a very common uh, a common provision in intercollegiate athletics as it relates to relationships between conferences and teams both of them have to have sufficient time within which to adjust to some to a team leaving or a team joining or whatever to me the biggest obstacle is if if the 14 months was in was in on the document that that marshall signed to me that's the biggest obstacle is how, how do you get around the 14 months and from October to July is nine months. I mean, there's. I mean, even if you include the October intent to leave, not the recent "we are definitely leaving" statement, that's nine months. So I think that's the biggest obstacle. If it's in the original bylaws, if they saw the provisions at 14 months and they signed, the herd signed on to it. To me, that's that's the biggest obstacle that they have to overcome. This is pretty but money. Listen, but Paul money cures everything. The whole idea of giving the 14 month notice is so that they would pay their exit fee. Other teams would benefit from that. It would give CUSA the opportunity to go out and have some money to go recruit other teams. And since they've already done that um, effectively, I guess they've, they've effectively done that. Um, but money cures everything, and I, I suspect at the end of the day, what will happen, whether there's arbitration, whether there's uh, whether the judge makes a, 
uh, adjudicates it, uh, exit fees plus X will probably take care of the problem, whatever X is as far as money, money goes. This sounds like also if this goes through the way Marshall hopes, this might be a blueprint for one, for other teams to try to get out of situations early, and two, we might see leagues start to create language to prevent something like this from happening again. And, you know, that's that's sort of my takeaway right now. We're going to see schools jump on this quickly if need be, and then leagues are going to try to figure out right. how to prevent this from happening. I mean, Conference USA is sort of in a position of, of weakness because – you know, there's no grant of rights or anything like that from you know the other power conferences that really deter you from making this kind of leap. Well, I'll just give you I'll, I'll use this analogy. I, I'm on I'm on the I represent the city of Huntington in the opioid cases. So when Huntington and Cabell County went to trial against the the distributors, uh, it's a much bigger team. You see the we have much bigger team on our side and they have a much bigger team on their side. So I, I would say that using that analogy, conference USA is being, is having, uh, getting a lot of support from other G five conferences on their position because they don't want it to have happen to them. Just like Marshall would be getting support from other G five teams like ODU and Southern Miss and any, any team that might want to, you know, um, leave a conference. So my guess is everyone has has these unofficial advisors on both sides because you're right. Um, um, a ruling in favor of Marshall can be precedent setting, and a ruling against Marshall could be precedent setting. But rest assured, the last thing you said is true, and that is um, they uh, they they and the other P5 and the G5 conferences will adapt their contracts, their agreement, so that it's more strongly worded, so there's no ambiguity, so Marshall and ODU and Southern Miss don't, don't win these kind of cases. Yeah, they will do that. They will absolutely do that. Something else that was interesting to me when I was reading the, um, yeah, again, you know, there were a lot of pages, but what I picked up on was some of the language as well. I don't know if this is uh, – ticky tacky or if this is really meaningful but you know there are phrases that don't mention withdrawing member and there's terminology one section has this arbitration says this and marshall was playing on the withdrawing member status as a withdrawing member which was not mentioned in the uh, arbitration as well you know is that just marshall throwing stuff on the board, seeing what sticks, or is, is that something that really is looked at as, okay, it's small, but it's a distinction? Yeah, well, it's both. It's both. When you when you file pleadings, you file every single theory uh, that you can of recovery in the event that some of them don't, don't stick, as you call it. You want to have others that are there. So you do, you do take the shotgun approach, but at the same time, you uh, good lit, good lawyers, and I'm sure Marshall has good lawyers in this case. Uh, you also point out that yes, this all may the arbitration may apply to Marshall University in general, but it doesn't specifically say it applies to this set of facts. So you may find judge. Even if you find for the arbitration clause and you find that it's that it's uh, valid, it you can also find that it does not apply to this set of facts. So yeah, that's good pleading on the on the part of the uh, of the attorneys. And I, I didn't like I said I don't I don't know who they are, but uh, that's good pleading. If I've got uh, if I've got the group uh, in front of me here, uh, let's see it. Um yeah, it's uh, Perry W. Oxley, Brian D. Morrison, Eric D. Selliers, uh, Christopher Weed, Oxley Rich Salmons, PLLC is uh, what the uh, well, Brian, what the Brian is. and I, Brian, <laughs> Brian leads a uh, lawyer Bible study that I'm in every Wednesday. So, yeah, it's a good firm. Okay. Yeah, it's a very good firm. Yeah. So yeah. you'll have it's something got, to talk about got, this week. 
Well, yeah, we'll talk about retribution, and <laughs> I don't know how we can stick a Bible concept to it, but we'll find a way. Brian will find a way. So you can just you you get one up on him. You can say, "Hey, look, yeah. I, I was on with Swan twice. You know, where are you at on this?" Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. Well, they got the case and I didn't, so you know they're they, they're getting the last laugh, right? Right, but you know what? You can sit back and critique it. That's right, and and honestly, I I, I say that in jest. I I'm, I'm really not interested in. I didn't say that last you know last Wednesday to to solicit the, the services, but that's a good that's a good group. That's a very solid uh, group, and uh, in retrospect, that's that's exactly who I would have chosen uh, if I were Marshall University litigating a case. Our legal expert, Charleston area attorney Rusty Webb, of course, uh, big herd fan, loves the herd, so. Uh, always uh, now our go-to guy when it comes to uh, stuff like this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you've you've added to your role now. You can put that on your website. You know, uh, I, right, uh, right. Yeah. Legal analyst for the Paul Swan Drive-By Show. <laughs> I like it. For there 15, you go. My, literally 15 minutes of fame, or what is it now? 19 now. 19 Not, minutes of fame. Something like that. Yeah, and you know, of course, um, I was suggesting if we could get like a live stream of this, you and I just sit down and will commentate on, I don't know, like Court TV does. Just, you know, commentate let's on. Do it. Well, let's do it. I mean, let's do it. Will they live stream this? You know, can we get that? I'll, I'll, dri- I'll drive down. Okay. I'll drive down. I love coming down here. I was just down there Friday. I was down there. Let me see. Yes. Yeah, I saw the mayor, and then I watched Marshall and WVU play tennis. And I was just down there Friday. So, yeah, it's all good. Okay. Yeah, will, will we get to will we get to watch this? I know, yeah, we've seen court cases on uh, TV before, but uh, yeah, with something like this, you know, is there a possibility that we could? I don't see it. I have, I have, I have yet to see any uh, live streaming of circuit court, uh, and for that matter, federal court. They're really strict in federal court, but I have yet to see it. If 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 it happens, uh, it would be precedent setting. Maybe you ought to. Maybe you ought to inquire. Uh, that sounds like which, something. Hey, do you know which judge has this case? Um, it was. Uh, let's see. I've got. I've got the. Uh, I've got the civil case information statement in front of me, uh, and it looks like uh, Conference USA. It's got Christopher D. Child's name on it, and Mike Wolfel, Circuit Clerk, Cabell County, West Virginia. No, no, no. Okay, those are. Uh, yeah, I'm talking. I was thinking of the judge. Which yeah, I, judge I'm just looking at. I'm looking for names here. Um, yeah, so now, Wolf was just a circuit clerk, right? Uh, and I see. Uh, I see Child's name. Yeah, on you. It. it wouldn't. It wouldn't be on the complaint. It wouldn't be on the complaint. Okay. I just figured by the time we finished this sentence, somebody would have tweeted, "You were Ryan," <laughs> and and said it. You know how they. You know how the listener will answer your questions for you really quick. Well, we'll figure that out for sure. We'll uh, we'll definitely uh, hopefully uh, get more information as uh, again this is uh, this is going to be fun who who thought we would have this kind of fun here in these off months after basketball season is over i didn't think anybody i didn't think we'd have this kind of fun now we do i should have been a lawyer i should have got a law degree so i could add that to my repertoire broadcast lawyer cuz those guys make money i hear i think we lost him Let's check on that real quick. Let's see if uh, we lost Rusty. That's my big chin. Oh, there you are. Chin. I should have been a broadcaster. I was thinking I should have been a broadcaster. Um, um, all I do between the last national championship game talk about and think about college football. I am absolutely obsessed with college football. I just that's all I want to talk about. So this is good. It'll kind of keep kind of keep it in the conversation the next next few weeks anyway i don't i don't think the judge is going to take long to have a full-blown hearing on this and i thought did somebody say the preliminary injunction hearing was today at two i think if it was you would have known it so yeah i haven't seen anything yeah i haven't seen anything yet come out okay on that. yeah okay okay i'm sure so something what we will should say. do is we should get back together after the ruling on the preliminary injunction because that's going to be the first hearing that's mostly argument not a lot of evidence basically saying Hey, does Marshall have enough evidence to kind of call time out uh, in this litigation uh, on, on everybody's scheduling things? And then I call it the emergency room, and then you have the operating room later, which is the full blown hearing. And I think they'll both happen quickly, really. We'll do it. Um, 
I'm seeing some other things here. Again, I'm, you know, this is your wheelhouse, not mine. Uh, there's a yes check mark for jury demand. So, um, oh, they want a jury. Okay, so yeah, here's a. Um, well, that's going to slow things down. Okay, so I'll ask you. Yeah, you know, they checked other for declaratory judgment injunction, and number three on the uh, civil case information uh, statement says jury demand yes. Case will be ready for trial by 8 2022. So, does that well, you does know, that change a few things? Well, here? that's that's yeah, that's basically saying, uh, by operation of law, uh, judge, we want you to enjoin Conference USA from scheduling any martial uh teams until after the hearing. So, if if that's it, that's sort of a way of saying we're we're not going to be ready until August, which is obviously a drop dead past the drop dead date. So I like that. I like I like that. I like that request. The jury's a little perplexing to me because usually deck actions are more more judge judge you know judges making decisions. I, I don't. I mean, I guess you could put all these questions before a jury as to whether there was a valid contract or whether there's a 14-month provision, valid 14-month provision, whether there's a valid arbitration clause, but that usually that's usually a, a, a legal issue, not, not so much a factual issue. Juries do facts and judges do law, so that's an interesting request, but they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. As soon as we get some more information, we'll definitely have you back on and talk about this. Uh, this has been fun so far. I, I didn't know uh, I didn't know sports law could be this fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has its moments. Most of the time, it's pretty boring, but there's some times when it, it gets exciting, especially when it's your team. Uh, you know, and those guys are Marshall fans too, by the way. Don't don't count them out. I know when you on our Zoom meeting, Brian's got. You can see his Marshall uh, pair, you know, his Marshall signs behind him. So, yeah, he's. They're all. Matter of fact, I one of the bowl games a few years ago. I caught a ride with him and his buddies to to the hotel because I didn't have a ride. So I asked him if I could thumb a ride with them, and they took me. It was down St. Pete. It's been God, it's been six or seven years ago at least. So Brian took me to the airport, and. Maybe Enoch was with him. Um, anyway, they're <laughs> I, good guys. They're good I, lawyers, and they're and they're and they're loyal fans. So okay, That's I'm getting a a, I'm getting a note from Ryan right now, who's been uh, you know doing some research while we've been talking, and he just uh, yelled at me. He's trying to send me more info. Uh, there could be five judges. Five. One of five. Okay, one of five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, of, yeah. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. So. He's trying. I guess he's trying to try to give me the names of the one uh, of which five it could be. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, it yeah. could be. Yeah. It's randomly. It's randomly. The clerk randomly assigns a judge. It's just total random. But I was just curious to see which judge uh, got the case. Yeah. Well, that's why I mentioned uh, Christopher Child's names on the uh, on the information statement. So it could be. Yeah. I don't know if that means he would be the one or. Uh, no, if it if it, if his name's on it, then I don't want to say. Okay, okay, fair. No, very fair. If, if his name's on it, it's, it's him. But I, I mean, I, I, I don't have it. I don't see it. I mean, I'm, it's not in front of me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll we'll revisit this again soon. All right. I appreciate you, sir. Number. Thank you, and uh, okay. we'll do it again. Okay, thank you. This is Robert Webb, Charleston area attorney. He's been uh, helping us out to understanding some of this information. Uh, we're going to take a quick timeout, come back. We're going to hear a little bit from Tony Kemper. We'll get your phone calls and text in. All of that's coming up on this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Our phone line, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. White Claw Heart Center it is made pure. We're going to start hitting those texts here in a few minutes. 304-523-2275. We'll get those here. Again, that's 304-523-2275. Paul Swan, your host for today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Women's basketball action coming up tomorrow. Marshall in action against Middle Tennessee. Rematch, it was an 80-41 loss in January. 
27th. Not a good performance. Tony Kemper said it was uh, embarrassing. Talked about perimeter defense not being good. Inside penetration, not good. Just wasn't happy. But forget all about that right now. We're focusing on Coach Kemper talking about Christian Spears, the new athletic director. He'll be introduced formally to the public and the media in an event on Friday at 10 a.m. Coach Kemper had a little bit of involvement with this, so he wanted to speak on this subject and he talked about in his introductory uh, statement earlier this afternoon about Christian Spears and just excited for the opportunity for him to take the job. You know, I'm excited to welcome Christian Spears here tomorrow. I guess, sorry, I got my days mixed up. Friday morning um, at his press conference. I think before that, uh, I know I want to say a heartfelt thank you to Jeff O'Malley. Um, you know, since he has been named the interim, uh, you know, I think the best word to describe it, he's been involved, um, be it spending time directly with our, our student athletes and our team or um, text messages with me about when our weather's not great, are you guys going to make it and um, keep your head up and, and nice wind and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, he's just been involved, and, and I really appreciate that out of him. And I know our, our, uh, our players, everybody in our organization did. So... Yeah, you got to give kudos to Jeff O'Malley. Came in, took over the position, had a legitimate shot at being the next athletic director, put in the work to be the next athletic director, did a lot of the work to get Marshall to this point. I'm sure had some advice as well concerning the legal action that's being taken and a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that's been going on. So he did a lot of work in a short time. So. And that was just on top of everything else he's normally done for the university. So, yes, again, uh, that is a uh, important thing to remember. Jeff O'Malley did a great job as the interim athletic director. Now, Tony Kemper, as I alluded to, he was on the search committee that forwarded the names. So he was part of the process trying to identify candidates, and he talked about that search committee and that process a little bit. I was fortunate to be on the, the search committee that ultimately um, – you know, I guess moved Christian forward, and then you know he was chosen by by President Smith. Um, he was great throughout the process. Shows a lot of energy. Um, I think he's done thing. I think the exciting thing for us is I think you can see um, the places that he's been. He's done things that have moved um, the entire athletic department forward. And I think from my perspective, that's that's really exciting. Now, one of the things that was interesting to me when talking to Coach earlier today was the interview process. There, there was a format set up where players could actually be a part, ask some questions, and give some feedback as well. I thought that was great because as a player, the athletic director is important because you hope that you can go to the athletic director. As any player – uh, on the uh, on any roster should be able to go to the athletic director and feel like you, know, you can be heard out. You can talk to the athletic director. Athletic director cares about you, wants to know how you're doing, how that you know you can be helped by him or her. I mean, these are important things. I'm sure. I, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions that maybe the players thought of that you know maybe we wouldn't have. But coach talked about that interview process and that player involvement. Uh, the way that we did the interviews here on campus, um, you know, Cece Mays, who you're going to talk to here in a little bit, she was, uh, her and a couple of our other student athletes went to all of the open, um, I guess, mic deals that they had for the student athletes. And, um, you know, she was, uh, Christian had her ready to run through a wall um, when, uh, when she got done listening to him. We had practice shortly after when they got done. And, um, you know, she came up to my office and said, I really, really liked him. So that's a ringing endorsement right there. CC Mays is one to tell you how she feels. She definitely is not shy when it comes to expressing herself. And so when I talked to her earlier today, I wanted to know from her, what was it about athletic director Christian Spears that inspired her? I mean, his energy off the gate was really just, it was through the roof. Like, I feel like he was being genuine with, like, we 
not only just myself, but just other student athletes on different teams here at Marshall, like we all had certain questions and I just feel like he was just answering genuinely and truthfully. And like, you know, he was just like, he's very passionate. If you watch the way I play, I'm a very passionate player. You know, I have a lot of uh, respect for the game. I feel like if you're going to play, you need to play with passion. And he just had a lot of passion and he was fired up and it just, you know, I feel like he was the one that I wanted to be the AD. So I'm excited that he got the job. We'll hear more from her tomorrow on the game itself, same from Coach, but we'll end with this. Coach talked about uh, a little bit more detail of what that interview format was. And I'll tell you this, he has some nice things to say about C.C. Mays. As he, as he mentioned, you know, she liked him. She mentioned to Coach that she really was – just took him as someone that was real – I mean, these are good things here, but Coach, talk a little bit more about that process and, of course, CC's involvement. But CC had a lot of really good things to say about him um, as soon as, you know, she walked out of listening to him. And, and not just listening. I think it, it was a back and forth. It was conversations with student athletes that, that uh, I think, you know, President Smith set up that format, and I think it was really good. We, we were able to participate – in three of the four, we were on the road for one of them. Um, but, you know, I think it gives everybody an opportunity to ask questions about, you know, what, what's this mean for me in women's basketball? You know, how's it going to translate to me? And um, if you've watched CC May's play, she, she ain't bashful. So I'm sure that she might have hit him with a couple tough questions. We might have to bring her on the show and let her do some interviewing for us. All right, quick timeout. We wrap it up. This is The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. Coming up on tomorrow's program, we're going to preview Marshall basketball. The Thundering Herd taking on Middle Tennessee, both on the men's and women's side. Also, we're going to hear from Chris Grassy. He's going to join us. Herd's playing a little soccer. Playing Ohio State. You know, they might be the best team in the Sun Belt whenever they join the Sun Belt. We'll see what happens here. So that's coming up tomorrow on the program. Of course, it's going to be an extra long show tomorrow because we've got our pre-game coverage. Thundering Herd taking on Middle Tennessee. We go on the air with that at 6 o'clock on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Also on 93.7 The Dog. So looking forward to that and hopefully we can talk about a Marshall win. Get another streak going on here. Build off that Southern Miss victory. That was a good win to get. You'll take it. Gives you a little momentum, a little confidence going into a situation with Middle Tennessee. And then, of course, you got the, the next two after that against your bitter rival, Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. That should be fun. The next couple of uh, weeks should be fun here because you're wrapping things up with Middle Tennessee, possibly the last regular season Conference USA matchup with Middle Tennessee, and then wrapping it up with Western Kentucky, Probably the team you had the most fun with as a rival. So that's where we're at. These could be the last Conference USA games. And then, of course, the conference tournament, depending on the matchup. This could be it. If this goes through and Marshall can participate in the Sun Belt the upcoming season, this might be it right here. And, of course, wouldn't it be interesting if Western Kentucky is one of those schools sort of pushing to keep Marshall in the league that – final year, that obligated year, so says the league. I mean, that would really add to this rivalry a little bit more as far as maybe a slight little animosity. We don't like you. You don't like us. So let's play because that'll be lots of money for the fans showing up to each other's place. So that is, of course, coming up the rest of the week. Uh, Next week we'll have Randy Lee on, the voice of the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers as well. Looking forward to catching up with him as it is Western Kentucky week coming up. That's going to do it for this edition. Don't forget, you can catch the show anytime by subscribing to our podcast, The Drive. 
You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a follow, and you can listen to the show on demand. And, of course, you can always listen live. You can stream the show as well. We do that starting at WRVC.com. Once again, thanks for joining us back tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.